Good morning, dear students. Today we have next uh, lesson uh, that devoted to methodical problems of the arrangement of flow. And we will start our lecture with uh, the data information that we obtained in the last class. As you remember, we considered the concept of load, outer and inner load. Briefly, uh, I would like to say a few words about these characteristics. First, load or workload describes the kind and extent of uh, outer influence on a human being and it describes tasks from a physical, psychological or intellectual point of view. This is the point. So, in other words, everything that influences our body, our intellectual abilities, or psychological attitudes uh, influence uh, us from environment, from outside. So it's uh, this is the point. Uh, another characteristics is uh, inner load or load effect. After we receive this stimuli from environment, our body, our organism, react, and uh, this is the way how inner load is uh, designed. And the third uh, phenomenon is adaptation. It's uh, the most important uh, mechanism that uh, allows not only human organism but all the living uh, creatures to live and to survive. And adaptation is the fundamental uh, mechanism that allow us to increase our endurance, uh, stamina, strength endurance, uh, and so on. This is the basic uh, element in uh, training. When we uh, go to gym, for example, and or we recover from a training session, adaptation allow us to get stronger, to get more flexible, to get more endurance, and so on. When we will look at the methodology of the arrangement of load, we should uh, pay attention to all these three characteristics. And uh, when we will conduct uh, training planning, uh, all of these elements should be uh, mentioned in the form, uh, such as, for example, the training design or expecting uh, uh, reaction of our body, for example, increasing of heart rate or breathing rate. And uh, also adaptation should be uh, in the methodology too. For example, we plan to have a training session with focus on uh, strength endurance training. So we will have a uh, uh, about 48 hours for recovery uh, after each training session and uh, that means adaptation is uh, uh, considered in our plan too because without knowledge how organism adjusts uh, functioning uh, in order to uh, to work more efficient with the uh, uh, systematically increased uh, weight lifting in the gym so adaptation is uh, also important issue in this context another slide and information is uh, derived from the previous uh, lecture but it is important uh, to go further in the methodological problems of arrangement of load to go back and uh, consider the, the information about adaptation inner and outer load again. So as you remember, uh, according to this model of correlation between outer load, inner load and the development of sport performances, uh, we have this uh, correlation. 
So environment, namely our load, influence our organism and uh, uh, trigger a reaction uh, in that could be uh, expressed in adaptation and uh, this uh, uh, provide us with outcome in uh, this case it's uh, sport performance so we have uh, as you remember three times of uh, uh, outcomes it could be stagnation or even degradation or we have a performance capacity that develops it's a good point and uh, the third one is stagnation or even injuries and uh, analyzing we will find out that low outer load is uh, not enough not efficient not challenging enough so for our organism it's not uh, sufficient st stimuli to trigger adaptation but if we increase the uh, outload for example in weightlifting gym we will work with more weights or in the swimming pool we will swim uh, a little bit faster than usually so this outload will be uh, moderate for us or even vigorous and uh, it will allow us with its optimal inner load optimal inner load that means uh, how our body reacts uh, in the best way that means uh, it g is getting a stimuli to start adaptation but this stimuli is not too high to uh, harm our organism so consistently it goes to performance capacity that develops so but uh, performance capacity it means not only how we can uh, if we are swimmers for example athlete in swimming uh, not only we can swim faster of course it is but also that means that we have for example increased endurance uh, strength endurance uh, agility flexibility and some other parameters uh, motor parameters uh, that are enhanced so it's a good thing but the point is to find out the v moderate to vigorous or medium to high intensity not too low not extremely high and it depends how we can manage this uh, task it depends on our own experience as athletes uh, or depends on the tutor or teacher physical education teacher or coach that we are in communication we are working with him or her so uh, that means that knowledge and experience one of the most important factors to find and highlight this uh, medium uh, or high moderate to vigorous intensity uh, sometimes I this task is quite complicated difficult and we will find out that we used extremely high workload only after this mistake for example we are uh, to overload our body or organism or even have got some injury so this is quite uh, unfortunate case but uh, probably probability is quite high to have extremely high work load or outer load if we are not prepared if we uh, does do not have uh, uh, enough knowledge or experience so uh, the point is simple uh, before 
we start training safety first we should find out the best way to have a training session and the third case is extremely high workload as I said previously it's a very unfortunate situation it could lead to stagnation but sometimes it could lead to injuries and uh, that's what that's the most uh, uh, unfortunate situation that we should avoid uh, by all means yes and in case of uh, injuries or degradation with extremely high workload we have a overload of uh, organism functions should uh, avoid it by all means this model of correlation with this slide uh, show us uh, case for example with the sport athletes because development of performance tells us that mostly it uh, linked with uh, uh, sport activity but uh, it's not necessary only with them this is the universal uh, mechanism and could be uh, applied to any activity that we have uh, in our everyday life are we for example um, go to physical education classes of course it's not a sport because we usually uh, do not have uh, competitions but uh, we follow some uh, instructions recommendations and uh, perform some physical exercises that allow us uh, to get the same in load to start adaptation in our organism to change in the best way our uh, motor parameters our conditioning to change our endurance and strength and flexibility and so on and the same it will increase the uh, the quality if the efficiency of outcome for example we can uh, perform more push-ups uh, chin-ups uh, squats uh, or we c we can uh, uh, increase quality of our technique in different kinds of sport such as uh, volleyball we can serve the ball with more accuracy with more power if we uh, will uh, manage the medium to high moderate to vigorous outer load discussing inner load we should uh, now go a little bit further to consider basic training principles so we have uh, five of them overload progression specificity regularity and individuality all these five principles are combined together uh, and uh, applied in every training session but uh, their precision and uh, the way it is pre presented uh, allow us to increase or decrease the quality of our uh, training session so methodology of arrangement of uh, the load should consider all these basic training principles principles describe how the body responds to the physiological stress of physical activity across all five components of health related fitness namely aerobic fitness muscular strength muscular endurance flexibility and body composition aerobic fitness is one of the most important uh, conditioning uh, parameter it uh, allow us to recover uh, faster or slower between training sessions because aerobic fitness depends on metabolic reactions how our body is uh, capable to uh, manage uh, 
recovery processes in different parts of our body not only muscle tissue but also some organs to recover and uh, students or generally sport athletes who have the above average aerobic fitness level could not only recover faster between training sessions but also uh, in one training session recover faster between sets between exercises this is one of the most important uh, outcomes of uh, endurance training uh, also it allows to have a longer training session not 60 or 90 minutes but maybe 100 or 120 minutes quite a, a lot of time and uh, this also uh, brings uh, significant improvement in uh, conditioning training uh, aerobic fitness uh, also uh, responsible for oxygen um, utilization by cells and tissues and uh, normally uh, people who have uh, aerobic fitness above average have a working uh, capacity above average too it's very uh, tight correlation between the between them and so not occasionally this uh, conditioning parameter uh, is listed um, first in this sequence next uh, muscular strength very important health related uh, fitness uh, indicator and uh, muscular strength could be uh, expressed not only in uh, one repetition for example as a maximal strength indication but also uh, some uh, strength endurance so multiple repetitions uh, also is uh, one of the conditioning parameter next flexibility very important uh, outcome of uh, health related fitness training too and this is uh, important not because it represent uh, um, plasticity of uh, uh, human body uh, tissues uh, ligaments muscles but also how uh, inner coordination inner muscular coordination is uh, optimized in different exercises for example uh, if their muscle tone is too high muscle group that is, is uh, with a uh, tone too high it prohibits the movement in joint but when uh, the muscle or muscle groups are relaxed so it allows to join to present to show more movement more range of movement so this is important next is uh, body composition this is of course this is the uh, outcome of training different kind of training so are we willing to reduce our uh, fat uh, fat in our body or increase our muscle uh, tissue component in our body it all depends also on training sessions and all these parameters of uh, health related fitness uh, indicate on these five uh, basic training principles so let's uh, go step by step and consider each one overload as we considered it before 
it uh, very uh, it, uh, it starts the adaptation without overload uh, it's no adaptation no improvement no uh, increasing enhancing of our motor abilities this is important and as I said before uh, we should be very careful in uh, adjusting the influence the uh, out load because uh, if it's too high it could be if it's extremely high it could be uh, quite dangerous for our body the next principle is progression of course if we are training we consider this process as a long time not week or more it's quite it's a could be years and each time we go to gym we pl we have a plan uh, how to progress what should we do uh, how can we uh, variate intensity and volume of training workload in order to get adequate overload so it's a quite sof uh, sophisticated uh, point of view uh, to have a health related fitness training sufficient the third one is specificity it should be more precise uh, influence of outload on a particular system on a particular muscle group so we not uh, have a training <coughs> in general but we should know what muscles are engaged in a particular exercise what uh, s uh, organism systems are working right now to provide us with energy for example to make this uh, kind of physical activity possible so specificity also requires some knowledge some experience in planning regularity that means we have a system we consider training sessions as a system so we have a systematic view so we know how many trainings we have a, a week a month uh, what's the recovery time period that should be maintained is also considered The next principle is individuality uh, and by this uh, item we consider not only height, weight, body composition but also conditioning, motor abilities, uh, some intellectual or psychological uh, uh, characteristics too individuality uh, is the unique parameter that should be always uh, be taken in uh, accounted on uh, efficient and optimal workload could be only achieved by considering of individuality If we have a training, for example, in a weightlifting gym, we have a quite uh, obvious example by uh, working with uh, uh, free weights, for example, that each of us is unique and uh, quite individual. For example, one student can work with 15 kg efficiently and uh, perform 10 repetitions but another one 20 repetitions with the same weight so this is the example quite uh, obvious and precise of uh, this uh, basic training principle uh, previous lesson we uh, learn about fit guidelines 
and in order to consider uh, methodological problems of uh, load adjustment we should consider this uh, again as you remember fit stands for frequency intensity time and type and all these four uh, parameters are considered and uh, change in one of them could increase or decrease the quality of training uh, first of all first of all we should consider these uh, parameters as uh, key elements and tools to achieve safety in training session safety first and uh, also it uh, allows us to in enhance efficiency of physical activity uh, frequency describes how often a person performs the targeted physical activity for each component of health related fitness the beneficial and safe frequency is generally three to five days per week and aerobic fitness activities can be performed all or most days of the week um, it, this is a good uh, example uh, how frequency should be considered of course uh, we could be well motivated to go to gym every day but in case of uh, uh, copying some programs uh, some uh, progress of some athletes uh, it's better to analyze our uh, capacities present capacities present level of conditioning uh, as it was it was mentioned that aerobic fitness activities can be performed almost every day it depends on our uh, endurance uh, current uh, physiological status uh, usually people who, when they are getting older uh, their metabolic functioning uh, intensity of metabolic functioning is decreasing and uh, that means it requires more time for recovery between training sessions for people who are older and uh, uh, conversely with young men uh, it actually it can be done quite su uh, uh, sufficiently almost every day uh, jogging or um, walking as an exercise or bicycling or uh, cross-country skiing too is possible intensity describes how hard a person exercises and represents one of the most critical decisions in program de design the selection of appropriate exercise intensity depends on a number of factors including their participants developmental readiness personal goals and current physical activity at fitness level intensity is uh, one of the key element that allow us to adjust a moderate to vigorous uh, physical activity if we will be mistaken in uh, intensity level it could bring us or to uh, stagnation in our progress or sometimes unfortunately to injuries because we will be uh, extremely overload and I said before as I said before we can get this knowledge or skill to modify intensity by our experience by our knowledge or by uh, consulting communication with uh, people who surround us such as uh, coaches uh, our teammates uh, or physical education uh, uh, teachers
time or duration describes how long the activity should be performed uh, usually we have a one hour one and a half hour uh, training or a class and this time period is quite universal for for a group consisting of uh, students with different level of uh, fitness but sometimes uh, students are quite uh, 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 trained uh, possess uh, uh, above average endurance or strength and uh, they require more time to spend more time in the gym so it also should be considered and uh, this is one of the um, parameter of individuality too so should be taken in consideration and the next one is type that refers to mode or what kind of activity a person chooses to perform uh, type of exercise for example it could be a static or dynamic uh, uh, way of uh, physical activity for example if we have a din dynamic uh, exercise we can move for example uh, free weight in a weightlifting gym if we have a static so we should uh, keep some weight uh, in in one position for a particular period of time so this is one of the examples of types another point of methodological problems of the arrangement of load is movement competence how it builds up what it consists of let's consider it so movement competence skills concepts and strategies uh, this is important to consider this kind of competence because uh, the methodology with uh, could be applied in arrangement of uh, training workload is uh, very correlated are very correlated the movement competence helps students develop the movement competence needed to participate in physical activities through the development of movement skills and the related application of movement concepts and movement strategies An understanding of fundamental skills and concepts is essential both to an individual's de development of effective motor skills and to the application of these skills in a wide variety of physical activity. Uh, let's uh, have a uh, more precise consideration of these two sentences. So understanding of fundamental skills uh, what skills are fundamental it's a good question uh, usually walking running jumping are fundamental skills so those uh, exercises very complicated very difficult to adjust but we apply on everyday basis without any conscious effort and so precise those are fundamental skills and uh, also uh, additionally during our uh, life we can acquire more skills more we acquire, can acquire more technique uh, from different kinds of sport so by this we enlarge our uh, list of uh, exercises that are stored in uh, our uh, memory in our motor memory and uh, the larger this uh, uh, list of exercises the better because uh, in different situation we can choose one or another to 
uh, optimize uh, the, the movement itself. For example, if we go to the physical education class, and the topic is uh, where well the topic is uh, to improve uh, volleyball serving, serving the ball in volleyball. And uh, if uh, some of us missed uh, some volleyball training and uh, does not possess uh, some exercises similar to serving the volleyball ball, so it could be quite a difficult task for this student to progress in comparison with students who uh, possess uh, a similar uh, movements in memory so e experienced students let's call them this way experienced students um, so uh, skills in a variety of physical activities of course our world our uh, opportunities uh, uh, require quite wide variety of exercises quite variety of exercises in our in our experience motor movement experience uh, and uh, uh, this is one of the most uh, important aspect in met methodology of arrangement of training because if we uh, are successful in training for example in uh, acquiring a new technique so more motivated we are and uh, it also gives us uh, uh, the basis to follow all these uh, five principles of progression and regularity for example because if we are not motivated if we are not successful in training we we will find a way to or to analyze and uh, to detect the problem or we will choose the the option to quit this training sessions this is important so if we possess wide variety of exercises so it gives us a, a solid foundation for successful improvement for example in volleyball training uh, because the development of movement skills is age related and because students skill levels depend on a variety of factors including their experiences outside of school the opportunities they have for practice their rate of growth and maturation and their abilities and interests the range of skills in a typical class will vary widely uh, one of the most important phenomenon is a uh, age related uh, movement skills uh, development uh, the younger we are usually the more dynamic we can uh, enhance our uh, movement skills proficiency uh, not occasionally it was mentioned uh, school age uh, also university level too because uh, uh, when we are young we have a, a great opportunity to uh, work on our conditioning or coordination or work on our technique more in a more efficient way movement skills and concept movement skills must be explicitly taught they are not acquired simply through activities of various sorts so skill means that we uh, implement some uh, technique for example sport event technique and uh, use it consciously and uh, we apply some sort of knowledge uh, instructions in order to 
make it uh, possible to achieve a particular goal for example uh, to throw the ball with uh, a particular accuracy however these skills should not be taught in isolation from the context in which they will be applied instead they should be taught in a way that shows how they will be used within and across a variety of physical activities so that students can apply and transfer their skills to specific activities such as games, gymnastic, dance, fitness or recreational activities. Uh, it's quite uh, difficult to plan or even imagine the learning skills in a very narrow context usually this context is uh, quite uh, wide uh, for example it could be not only sport games but also minor games where we could uh, demonstrate a complex of skills not only one but uh, a bunch of them and it will it, it, it allow us to be more successful in these uh, activities when students are learning or developing a skill, they need opportunities for practice and feedback. Two important uh, aspects of any training, of any activity, is uh, practice and uh, how we manage it or feedback. And feedback could be provided by ourselves we can see, we can hear, we can uh, feel the movement or interaction with some subject but also feedback can be provided by a, a teacher or coach or a teammate it's uh, very important uh, uh, to uh, analyze the information that you are getting with feedback by analyzing uh, I mean uh, you can uh, uh, split the movement or technique that you applied in uh, particular phases and uh, find out which phase y you can improve and uh, so improve the movement itself too. Practice is important too. By practice we can uh, consider a multiple uh, repetitions for example uh, working with basketball ball we can uh, uh, again and again perform some kind of uh, uh, movement and by this practice we can uh, start uh, feedback and uh, step by step uh, bring some uh, cor a correction to the rep each repetitions and uh, improve our technique quality. Students uh, learn most effectively when they have opportunities to problem solve and play an active role in their learning. This is uh, also Im important methodological uh, issue uh, problem solving it means that every task uh, is a challenge for us and uh, w if we think how to uh, solve this problem how to manage this uh, task achieve a particular goal we can uh, we show we demonstrate our active role we are not just passive uh, performers we are active we participate actively in this process process of learning of movement and uh, of course uh, we cannot be a hundred percent active all the class for example physical education class because uh, we feel fatigue 
how energy can be uh, decreased the energy level can be decreased uh, we can uh, have uh, some demotivation sometimes too and all this uh, can lead to enhanced or decreased effi efficiency but the point is to stay active and to think and be ready and able to problem solve in uh, the process of uh, acquiring new technique, new exercise. As students develop and work towards consolidating their skills, they will be able to combine skills and apply them to more complex activities and games. Th this is the next step of mastering of skill when they are consolidating and uh, students are becoming to be able to combine skills uh, for example in in game situation sport game situation it's uh, very important because uh, you have to uh, opposite uh, the team the opposite team and uh, to demonstrate different technique movements and uh, to react sometimes very quickly to always changing uh, game situation and uh, if you you and you also you should apply different uh, tactics and uh, if your skills not uh, auto, uh, not learned very well you can manage all these things at the same time so just imagine you have to follow the uh, behavior of opposite team what are they uh, uh, making right now and uh, to choose the proper tactic in this case but if your skill level is low you it will be failure so this is why why it's so important for uh, sport games for athletes in basketball or volleyball to always to work on a technique to improve their skills S so in the very complicated and difficult uh, game situation they will not uh, lose their focus on the game itself and the uh, tactics because they have to pay more attention on the their the execution of their movement itself if the skill is low and uh, conversely if the skill level is quite high they can uh, switch the attention from the skill execution skill performance to uh, game situation to tactics this is important major movement skills do not result from physical maturation alone rather they must be continually refined and combined with other movement skills in a variety of physical activities. It is important that teachers facilitate the learning of movement skills and concepts through the progression of age-appropriate activities. This is also important methodological problem issue. That means that when we are getting older, when we are mature, uh, how physical uh, skills, movement skills are improved, not only alone. Important components of movement competence include the development of fundamental movement skills and the application of them and movement concepts and principles. So this is a combination of movement skills, their application, 
uh, and also application of some concepts and uh, these five basic principles that we discussed before uh, at the same time and this is the most important methodological problem of the arrangement of workload and uh, knowledge experience uh, of uh, athletes can facilitate in this uh, process in this direction of of uh, actions uh, let's talk about equipment having enough equipment is helpful in maximizing physical activity and uh, equipment could be uh, with different quality different uh, quantity but if you work in a group uh, in case you are not willing to stay in line and wait for the equipment so it's better to prepare it uh, before a good point to remember is that no one improves health related fitness while waiting in a line to be active this is a important aspect but sometimes the environment and the conditions are not uh, sufficient for the group to perform a training session uh, so in this case uh, uh, every group member should uh, have a plan what to do in order to stay active to, to demonstrate physical activity so um, this is the important to that uh, every student has a plan what to do has a purpose has a um, the image of their goal settings for a particular training session set up equipment and test audiovisual equipment and computer programs before class begins also uh, equipment that uh, uh, provide audiovisual and uh, some computer technology uh, can facilitate for training session conduction and uh, uh, for example audiovisual equipment and computer programs is a uh, new technology and uh, could be applied pr computer programs that uh, provide us with uh, feedback more precise and more acute for example video analysis of the movement how we perform it so it could be of course your teacher or your coach who will tell you or discuss with you the uh, technique and the possible uh, uh, errors in techniques but also uh, some audiovisual equipment can help to provide you with uh, proper feedback um, even uh, uh, even uh, a smartphone can help you if your uh, teammate will film your movement your exercising and show you uh, how was it uh, performed it's a simple uh, tool that uh, can significantly increase the uh, technique improvement and uh, provide you with uh, quite a high level of feedback also make sure that equipment is in good working order by inspecting it at least once a month it's also important firstly for you, for your safety uh, especially when we are working in a weightlifting gym so always pay attention uh, how their uh, is the working condition good enough? Every, everything is okay or not? 
uh, secure exercise equipment such as treadmills and stationary bikes so that they cannot be used without adult supervision just supervision uh, sometimes some uh, training machines require uh, knowledge and experience in maintenance so this personnel should be also be present e and uh, if you go to the gym and uh, always try to ask for a person responsible for maintenance of a particular machines like uh, stationary bikes uh, to get more specifics more detailed information about the state of this uh, equipment assign specific students or student assistants to pass out and return equipment uh, actually this uh, is helpful too in uh, methodological problems of the arrangement of load we should consider this issue as well because uh, sometimes if the group uh, is uh, quite large so coach or teacher um, cannot uh, pay attention to everybody some details uh, and some uh, actions some uh, some cases could be left uh, unseen or unresponded and by some mm, leader student leader or student assistant uh, it could be the situation could be solved quite efficiently of course a student uh, could not uh, possess all the knowledge or experience or methodology how to arrange a workload in training but uh, a student can uh, assist to coach or teach him by performing some minor um, uh, actions personal safety and injury prevention injury prevention topics focus on areas such as road safety including pedestrian bicycle and vehicle safety concussion prevention identification and management seasonal safety rules sun and uv protection home safety fire safety safety when volunteering and working and first aid <coughs> in methodological problems of the arrangement of load <coughs> personal safety and injury prevention should be on the top of the list of actions uh, here are only a few examples of uh, potential threats uh, but uh, um, Paying attention for them uh, is uh, critical for efficiency of the training. So, by uh, taking the, some personal safety measures, we are not only make our physical uh, activity uh, process longer by avoiding some injuries by uh, but also enhancing um, indirectly the quality and efficiency of each of our training sessions uh, one one thing that is uh, uh, responsible for this improvement is that we think and plan our training so we take active role active participation in the process of uh, physical activity right before the training just begun this is important so training begins training starts not only when you uh, touch uh, a volleyball ball no it starts before because you are thinking and you are planning you imagine 
uh, a mental uh, image uh, of uh, the movements of exercises that will be present uh, uh, when you will come to training. The expectations address the knowledge and skills needed to reduce safety risks at home, at school and in the community. Risk taking is a natural and important part of motivation for students, especially adolescents. Having confidence to take risks is essential to enjoying and achieving in both learning and life. So risk management, very important issue in methodology of uh, arrangement of load. So uh, the more we are uh, experienced, the more risk management we can we are able to to undertake and uh, self-confidence and the feeling of ma uh, managefulness depends on risk taken that we considered or con or are considered on everyday basis so self-confidence in a training session depends not only how well you perform in a particular exercise or how uh, dynamically you improve your skills but also how you manage risk taken every day having the ability to manage risk for both themselves and others however is essential to physical safety and mental and emotional well-being to develop risk management skills students need engage in skill building activities and thoughtful discussion about ways to minimize harm in real life situation personal safety and injury prevention injury prevention topics focus on areas such as road safety including pedestrian bicycle and vehicle safety concussion prevention identification and management seasonal safety rules sun and uv protection home safety fire safety safety when volunteering and working and first aid <coughs> in methodological problems of the arrangement of load <coughs> personal safety and injury prevention should be on the top of the list of actions uh, here are only a few examples of uh, potential threats uh, but uh, um, paying attention for them uh, is uh, critical for efficiency of the training so by uh, taking the, some personal safety measures we are not only make our physical uh, activity uh, process longer by avoiding some injuries by uh, but also enhancing um, indirectly the quality and efficiency of each of our training sessions uh one one thing that is uh, uh, responsible for this improvement is that we think and plan our training so we take active role active participation in the process of uh, physical activity right before the training just begun this is important so training begins training starts not only when you uh, touch uh, a volleyball ball no it starts before because you are thinking and you are planning you imagine uh, a mental uh, image uh, of uh, 
the movement of exercises that will be present uh, uh, when you will come to training. The expectations address the knowledge and skills needed to reduce safety risks at home, at school and in the community. Risk taking is a natural and important part of motivation for students, especially in lessons. Having confidence to take risks is essential to enjoying and achieving in both learning and life. So risk management, very important issue in methodology of uh, arrangement of load. So uh, the more we are experienced, the more risk management we can we are able to to undertake and uh, self-confidence and the feeling of ma uh, managefulness depends on risk taken that we considered or cons or are considered on everyday basis so self-confidence in a training session depends not only how well you perform in a particular exercise or how uh, dynamically you improve your skills but also how you manage risk taken every day having the ability to manage risk for both themselves and others however is essential to physical safety and mental and emotional well-being to develop risk management skills students need to engage in skill building activities and thoughtful discussion about ways to minimize harm in real life situation so here we considered uh, basic uh, elements of methodol methodical problems of the arrangement of uh, load. Uh, of course, there are many more, but uh, to consider these specifics, uh, we will need uh, additional lecture or lectures, and uh, this information. Uh, is uh, very correlated to other subject or could be correlated with other subject that you uh, uh, study or will study next years so I hope that uh, this information uh, can be useful for you not only in uh, physical education classes but also in other subjects and most important in real life uh, as before uh, it will be a, a test that will be uh, uh, positioned posted right before the link to this uh, lesson and uh, after you go through all these slides and try to memorize a key uh, points of the lecture uh, you are welcome to complete this test and uh, your teacher will check it and uh, make decisions so about the, your uh, mark and participation in this class so I hope uh, uh, all was uh, quite readable and understandable and uh, this uh, verbal information was also quite um, uh, simple for you to comprehend so see you next time and best wishes